Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week we've got new meshes, new examples in the Bevy repo, and some compute shader. If you're happening by and you don't know what Bevy is, Bevy is a refreshingly simple data-driven game engine built in Rust. It is free and open source forever, and is heavily based on the ECS or Entity Component System pattern. And with that, let's get right into it. Bevy Utils has a tracking issue to either remove or reduce the crate entirely. 12772 makes progress towards this goal. But I really want to point out that the overarching effort here is largely refactoring and moving code. So this can be a great introduction to the code base for newer contributors. There's a great list of what currently exists in the crate and where it needs to go in the original tracking issue. That brings us to Triangle 3D getting its meshing implementation. Do note that the images shown here are a little bit disorienting in that these lines do not represent vertices. The Triangle 3D primitive is just three vertices. And thus these lines that you see here are just a texture applied to it. To me, this is a particularly interesting meshing implementation because triangles are often thought of as the base primitive. Given the amount of comments, this PR and the associated code is a great place to look if you're interested in how the meshing is constructed for any of the bevy math primitives. Additionally, in 12.9.14, the tetrahedron was added to 3D gizmos. And kicking off with one of the two examples added this week, dot metafiles and assets v2 were fairly new. So it was nice to see the new example in 12.8.8.2 for using dot metafiles when loading assets like images. This allows configuring settings like the image sampler options, as you can see here. The second example that got added this week is this compute shader GPU readback example. Reading back data from a compute shader is a very commonly requested tutorial. And since the GPU is a completely separate device and some behavior can differ between platforms, it can be pretty hard to decipher how to handle it without an example. In 12.8.77, a new example that uses crossbeam channel, which is a third party crate, to communicate between the separate main and render worlds. The code in the example includes a bunch of great comments detailing why specific code exists in different places and what the implications are. So overall, a really nice addition. Something I noticed in a couple of different PRs that landed this cycle, including the adjustments to mesh uniforms that we're looking at here, dividing up the visible entities list, and even the event optimizations all include these graphs. These graphs come from the Tracy profiler and can be seen in various configurations across each of these PRs. One thing that's certain though, is that you can get some very deep information using this profiler. Setting up and using the Tracy profiler is actually documented in the profiling docs and can be an interesting tool to add to your bevy debugging tool belt. Going even deeper, it's worth noticing that the underlying WGPU crate uses profiling, which is a crate that provides a very thin abstraction over instrumented profiling crates like that of Tracy. And of course, before we get to the showcases, Alice's weekly merge train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need some work. And with the intro out of the way, let's get into the showcases this week. First off, we've got this in progress game concept for Ludum Dare, which is a game jam that happens twice a year. There have been a number of updates since this was first posted, and it just keeps looking better and better. Next up, we've got Asteroids. The Asteroids game got a life system and a control system refactor on stream. It includes a custom asset loader for Kenny sprite sheets and depends on Bevy XPBD 2D for colliders and Bevy Hanapi for particle effects. The code for this one is available on GitHub. This showcase is a demo puzzle game meant to showcase an in-progress crate called Bevy Flurks. The source code for this one is also available on GitHub, as well as being playable on itch.io, which is what you were just seeing. This next showcase showcases some particles rasterized with a compute shader. There's not much more information on this one, it seems like the author is experimenting and will continue from particles to lines in the future. This 2D ragdoll is built with TGS soft plus XPBD hybrid solvers. The contacts use TGS soft, which is an impulse based solver, while joints use XPBD, which is a position based solver. XPBD is short for extended position based dynamics, which can most recently be seen in Bevy XPBD. And this Solver 2D post is probably the best place to take a look at what TGS Soft is, as there are many solvers being tested here. This showcase is a blackout for the upgrade shop in a multiplayer wizard battler. There are playtests every other Saturday in the evenings CET time, which you can find in the project's Discord thread in the Bevy Discord. Next up, we've got some procedural generation. These meshes are handcrafted using Voronoi's with random Y offsets per cell. And the Discord thread includes some useful explanations of quaternions, as well as further discussion. 
This top-down shooter recently gained extra zombie chunks that persist after they're defeated. The source code for this one is available on GitHub, and as you can see from the dependencies, really only depends on Bevy for Bevy-related functionality. There are no plugins to be had here, but there are dependencies for things like randomness and serialization. This sandish style simulation with white pixels falling into a black space is a bit more of an experiment or an art piece, but still looks very, very cool in my opinion. This game called Scavenger was built in the spirit of the last Bevy game jam. There's a devlog that details the chosen theme, as well as the work that went on through the week. It's a bit of a collection game where some collectibles make it so that your score goes up and other collectibles make it so that your score goes down. The devlog specifies which crates they depended on, including Sickle UI alongside Bevy Cobweb for reactivity, Bevy ECS tile map for level building, and Bevy sprite sheet animation for easier sprite sheet backed animations, which is very new this week and we talk about later. Voxel selection and task management make these little characters work hard on the area that was just selected. The map is 256 by 256 by 64, which makes 3D A star pathfinding a massive task. Can this worker reach this job is a hard question to answer. As seen later in the Discord thread, there are separate navigation graphs constructed per entity type. Objects like cats, for example, are small and can't scale ladders, while colonists are two tiles tall and can use ladders. This mini project was streamed live and renders a bullet hell style spiral pattern. Each bullet samples from a texture rendered by an off-screen 3D scene, as you can see the foxes through the bullets. While this showcase shows off the progress on this 2D wizard mining game, there are cave improvements, bats, and more. The procedural generation was blocking and started to take too long, so an additional progress indicator, which is what you just saw, was added while world generation happens. In addition, the game features new elements such as bats. The shadows on the tiles that aren't visible here are Skylight Mask 2Ds from the Bevy Magic Light 2D crate. When a chunk is loaded, solid blocks are merged into rectangular singletons for the chunk and associated Skylight Mask 2D is added for each selection. And that's it for the showcases this week. We're gonna move on into the crates. While there are many crate updates every week, we've chosen to show off only those that have substantial updates as many crates get small bug fixes or small improvements every week. For our first crate, we've got Bevy Dev, which contains a prototype material, which you can see both on the cube and on the plane here, and new in 0.3, a debug fly camera. Included is the ability to switch between cameras which is what you're seeing every time the camera switches between one of the four available options. Bevy Dev is currently at version 0.3. The other crate release we're going to talk about this week is Bevy Sprite Sheet Animation, which got its first release. Bevy Sprite Sheet Animation is a Bevy plugin for animating sprites that are backed by sprite sheets. Features include a single Bevy component to add to your entities to play animations, which is a very common API for these plugins to expose, tunable parameters, composable animations for multiple clips, events for these animations ending or reaching specific points, and a convenient API to select frames in sprite sheets. There is quite a bit of documentation here, so if this interests you, definitely go take a look. They also have a section for the mental model that Bevy sprite sheet animation thinks you should take when dealing with these kinds of animations. That brings us to our devlog section. The meat of this Zenith devlog post is what the author learned about structuring systems and components from rewriting their level editor to be more flexible and ergonomic. While the author of this devlog is coming back to a project they were working on in a different game engine after falling out of love with their current process. Their new path forward is a commitment to using Bevy after a few weeks of experimentation to make sure it was the right move for them. And this week we've got a couple of really great deep dives in our educational section. The first is how to build, sign, debug, and operate a Bevy app for iPhone from Linux without a Mac. And this is a very deep gist. In my opinion, it's not only useful for developers of Linux, but also those that just find certification annoying and overly complicated, which I personally definitely do. This just includes how to sign your applications, create certs, and also register devices. And finally, reactivity is a popular topic these days, whether you're working in web development or in other domains. This series of posts, of which there are three parts currently, covers the backing information you'll need to understand what Bevy Reactor is, as well as why it exists. From primitives to signals to full-on widgets, there's a lot of information in this post, or series of posts, and it sets you up well 
to understand what fine-grained reactivity even means. We've already covered a lot of the PRs that were merged this week in the initial overview, but we do have the full list here for you to read through if you would like to. And if you're looking to get into contributing to Bevy, we mentioned it in the overview, but you can also check out all the pull requests that were opened this week and might need some review, as well as all of the issues that were opened this week, which might need fixes. That's it for the issue this week. You might have noticed some design changes on the website, and there are in fact design changes on the website. Hopefully this makes it easier to find which link you're looking to click and which section you're most interested in. That's all from me. Have another great week and I'll see you in the next one.